Hey, what's up, life designers? Welcome to Intentional Tuesdays. Let me ask you a question. Are you a leader, a manager, a coach, or a mentor? The chances are you have the opportunity to play all four of these roles from time to time, no matter what your job or your function in the world may be. So understanding these four roles is really crucial. It's something that I work with people quite often, especially when they're in transition in their careers. Understanding the difference between these four roles is really important. So that's what we're gonna be focusing on this week with Intentional Tuesdays. So if that sounds interesting to you, then stick with us because we're gonna jump right in. So it's important to realize that these four functions, leadership, management, coaching, and mentoring, are mutually exclusive in the sense that you really can't perform more than one of them at a time. However, that doesn't mean that you are one of those things in your life. You, in reality, you have to have all four of these capabilities. There are four different roles, but they're roles that everyone plays at one point or another, and you really want to have the ability to move between these different roles depending on what the circumstances call for. So that's a really important piece and that's the piece that gets a lot of people into trouble. So let's go ahead and unpack each of these four different core functions. Let's go ahead and start with leadership. When I think of leadership, I think by and large the role of a leader is to create uncertainty. Now you're probably thinking that sounds kind of crazy, but, but bear with me. When you think about what leadership is and what leaders do, they create a degree of uncertainty within the group they are leading by posing a challenge or posing a vision of the future that is so far out there, so bold, that people have no idea how to get there. So there's a degree of uncertainty and that that vision that they've created, that land that they've described for the future is appealing. So there's also a degree of motivation that's being created, but there's a really high degree of uncertainty. So uh, by and large, a leader's function is to create uncertainty. Now let's talk about the way that leaders lead. Leaders lead by describing the destination. So the, the leader isn't so much concerned about showing the way, but they're more involved or they're more concerned with describing a destination and thereby creating a path. So they, they basically provide direction, but they provide direction in the form of a destination. So that is a unique aspect of leadership. And then let's talk about leadership in terms of the way they think about results. So when you think about leadership and, and the relationship with results, I think the results are going to be typically long-term. So when you talk about leadership, you are really focused on long-term results, not so much on the short-term results. So that is, in a nutshell, uh, and I realize I'm oversimplifying, uh, what leadership is all about. So now let's talk about management and the function of management. I think by and large that management is about removing uncertainty. That very same certain uncertainty that was created by leadership, the management function is to remove that uncertainty from the environment. And the, the primary way that, that management accomplishes this is through structure. So management provides a structure, a methodology, an approach and a technique and a specific path that is going to ultimately remove the uncertainty and thereby creating certainty. So management provides direction through, uh, by and large, through compliance. There's a real strong compliance function to management. In terms of the way, uh, whereas uh, the leader kind of creates the way uh, by, by providing a destination, management is very much about showing the way, uh, where uh, the, the management function is, that, is to say, okay, I know how to do this. Let me show you the way and let me remove all of the uncertainty involved in the situation here by showing you the way it's done. In terms of results, management, I would say, tends to be focused 
on the shorter term results. Uh, of course, there, this is a, a simplification, um, but the reality is that management, generally speaking, is more oriented towards short term results, whereas, as we talked about before, leadership is more about long term results. So that is what management is all about. So now let's talk about coaching. What is coaching all about? So coaching is quite different than both management and leadership in the sense that it is a very personal one-on-one -on -one type function. So in coaching, the, the function is to help a particular individual develop a plan for their own growth and development. So it's, it's very much about building capacities in a particular individual and equipping a particular individual with the capabilities needed to perform whatever agenda they are, are really trying to achieve. So in terms of the way, the coaching function is about showing the individual, the coachee, showing them their current way of looking at the world, showing them their current way of doing things, showing, showing them their current way of thinking about reality, and showing the person how that current way is getting in the way. <laughs> so coaching is very much about helping the individual to realize, okay, this is what is tripping you up, and this is the way that you're thinking about the world, and this is why that is limiting your ability to meet your own agenda. So in coaching, the agenda is very much about the person. The results, in other words, are up to the person who's being coached, the, the coachee. So the results are not about my results if I'm the coach. They're about your results as the client or as the coachee. And when you think about that compared to leadership and management, it's quite a bit different because both leadership and management are really about our results. They're really about the collective results. Coaching is really about your results. In terms of timeline with regards to results, coaching uh, it functions on both levels in terms of short term and long term, but coaching is very much a long term endeavor. The, the goal of coaching is to build capacities, build capabilities. In, a, in an individual, and that is a long-term benefit. Of, of course, the person might achieve some short-term goals, but ultimately the coaching function is about long-term. So those are the big elements of coaching. Okay, so now let's talk about mentoring. Uh, mentoring, similar to coaching, is a very personal experience. It tends to be, uh, tends to be a one-on-one -on -one function. Of course, there is such a thing as group mentoring, but for now, let's just focus on the one-on-one -on -one version. The difference between mentoring and coaching is the formality and the structure. Whereas coaching tends to have a very formalized structure and is really focused on um, achieving specific capabilities, mentoring tends to be a lot more fluid, tends to be a lot more situational. Um, in terms of the approach, the, the mentoring approach and the, the way, for example, with coaching, the, the function of the coaching is to show the person the current way that they're thinking about the world, the current way that they're doing things. With mentoring, it's more about my way. If I'm the mentor, uh, I'm going to be explaining to you how I did it or how I would do it. So mentoring is much more about my way and communicating my way to the mentee and allowing the mentee to derive whatever benefits they care to derive from, from hearing that. In terms of results, I would say mentoring tends to have less specificity with regards to its goals for results. Uh, mentoring is more about helping a person through probably a typical, a, a, a particular situation um, rather than having a specific plan to develop a specific capability or skill. Uh, and uh, in that sense, the results are long-term uh, but they're also going to be short term. So mentoring, I would say, covers both long and short term. So I think that's about it for uh, mentoring.
So those are the four major functions. And I mentioned at the beginning that these are mutually exclusive in the sense that you really can't perform more than one of these at a time because they're so distinct in terms of the elements that comprise them. But at the same time, we have to have the ability to perform all of these functions because we never know which one is going to be most required for any given moment. And in fact, I think that is the biggest challenge is trying to figure out, okay, which of these particular functions is best suited for the situation that I find myself in right now. And you really have to be careful about this because there are competing agendas. And it's, it's, never, it's never as simple as, a, as a, an equation that you can just very quickly you know, just point to a definitive objective answer. It's always gonna have nuance, it's always gonna have some degree of subjectivity, but you want to be very careful about whose agenda am I trying to advance? And what am I trying to accomplish here, uh, ultimately? And there's a real challenge between balancing the short-term results and the long-term results. And let's just take a couple of examples to, to make this point. If you are trying to be a leader in the sense of you're trying to provide that degree of uncertainty and motivation and you're trying to move a team or an organization in a particular direction, you might be tempted to play not only the leadership role, but also the management role, which is let me show you the way. <laughs> Uh, and, and the reason you might do this is one, you're probably very good at it. You're probably quite good at showing the way and coming up with specific approaches to accomplish a big goal. But is that really the best way for you to, to serve as a leader? Or would you be better off putting the vision out there, creating the uncertainty, creating the challenge and allowing the team uh, to manage their own way to that end goal? Uh, that is a pretty common example. Uh, similarly, if you are a manager and you are managing a team, so management is a big part of your function, at the same time, you have the opportunity to play the role of coach and to perform a coaching function. And those two things might come in competition with each other because the management side of you is going to want to get things done to accomplish the goals, to knock out the deliverables, and to uh, you know, meet the performance metrics that you are being held to. Whereas the coaching side would say, no, no, it's, there should be attention paid to each individual's agenda uh, of their own personal growth and development and helping them to grow, which takes time. They have to experiment, they have to try, do trial and error, they have to fail a little bit and learn from those failures. And as a manager, those things, uh, or uh, the management function kind of cringes at those things because management doesn't like certain, uh, uncertainty, right? And, and failure is all about uncertainty. Uh, but at the same time, the coaching function knows that that failure is crucial and it takes time to help people through uh, those particular learnings. So it's never an easy decision about which of the functions is really the most appropriate for any given moment. But you have to go through some kind of a decision process. You have to think to yourself and, and be intentional and simply ask yourself, okay, which, what are my results that I'm trying to achieve? And am I striking the right balance between my agenda, the organization's agenda, and the, other, uh, the agendas of the other people in, involved? And am I trying to strike a balance between short-term results and long-term results. And just raising your awareness about the different dynamics and the different um, almost polarities between these four different functions of leadership, management, coaching, and mentoring, you will ultimately get better at deciding which of those tools is the most appropriate for any given moment. So hopefully you found this useful and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the the new scenery for the Intentional Tuesdays. Such a nice day out here. I thought it would be a real shame to, to waste it by filming in the office. Uh, so I hope, hope it all worked out for you. And I look forward to our paths crossing again in the future. And until that day, I wish you all the best and prosperous journey. Take care.